Hello and welcome back to the 52 Week Bible Challenge. This week we have a special treat for you. We have Angela Cannon. Yes, Hi, she'll everyone. be joining us this week as we talk about Proverbs 31. And um, so I'd like to welcome you. I'm Donovan. I'm Kelly. And I'm Angela. Yeah. So let's dive in. Yeah, I wanted to share. Angela was in our um, Connect group that we did ju just like these. It was a, an official 52 Week Bible Challenge Connect group. but couple years ago and you you seem to love this way of study and I love in your journal you would um, draw pictures too to remind you and I can even I can remember in my mind like the lamb you drew you know oh, and the yeah. armor of God um, so I you know those had an impact on me so I enjoyed that and um, uh, you currently lead a 52 week Bible challenge connect group with Jason mm -hmm. your husband yeah how is that going it's going really well. Um, we have, it's usually always pretty packed. Um, cool. It's going really well. Um, everybody's getting a lot of things, going mm. deep dives and uh, finding some good stuff. That's cool. Yeah. Glad to hear that. Yeah, and when we, we kind of asked um, all the 52 Week Bible Challenge Connect Group leaders if they wanted to be uh, on a guest on the show with us, and you chose Proverbs 31, so I was interested as to why. Um, well, to be honest, I came in and said, well, um, I, I kind of had an agenda. I kind of was like, hey, I'm going to tell what I think is in the scripture and um, what I've always thought the scripture was about. Mm. And then I came in and um, read through and God revealed truth so Ooh. Um, Ooh. nothing, wait to hear what nothing this is that I say. actually thought it was about <laughs> it is about so oh, that sounds good yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. all right well let's dig in so yeah uh, Proverbs 31 it, it starts out in verse 1 it says the words of King Lemuel an oracle of his mother an oracle that his mother taught him and so right off the bat we're like well who is King Lemuel so if you've studied the Bible and you've read through all the books of Kings and Chronicles and Sam and judges like Nowhere else in the Bible is this man mentioned. So scholars kind of scratch their heads and say, we're not entirely sure who this man is. He's most likely a non-Israeli king, but mm -hmm. some of the ancient Jewish traditions attribute this to Solomon, which would make his mother Bathsheba. So uh, obviously a woman we've heard a lot about on the 52-week Bible <laughs> challenge. So, so in in either case though whether whether it's it's solomon or whether it's uh, another king uh, this king is obviously uh one who believes in the lord one uh, someone who uh was like likely had a jewish mother one thing i think that is important to call out is when it says an oracle that his mother taught him the word oracle means utterance word of the lord prophecy so mm -hmm. so this is not just um some quippy saying like this is you know they they they, this was either written by Solomon or it was added later by someone else because they believe that this is from the Lord and was something that was important to add in. So the, there's kind of two parts to this. There's kind of the part about like, this is how to be a good king. And then there's the part about this is how to find or this is what a good wife looks like, at least in the Old Testament <laughs> view of it. Because like, there's things that the New Testament says as well. And I think that they Ooh. actually go together. But before we get there, there's the um, exhortation to the son um, and there's two things that he's being warned against. And I mm -hmm. think these are important things that, that all of us need to be you know, aware of. And the first one is uh, where she's saying, what are you doing, my son? What are you doing, my son uh, of my womb? What are you doing, son of my bowels? Do not give your strength to women, your ways to those who destroy kings. And what's she saying here? Well, she's basically saying, stop sleeping around. Stop giving all your energy to chasing women. And how does this play in? And so whether this was written by Solomon um, on his own life, Solomon had a thousand wives, by the way, well, 700 wives and mm -hmm. 300 concubines, but concubines were basically like secondary wives. And so, it is. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> do the math and figure that out. <laughs> so, so either this was somebody right looking back to the foolishness of Solomon in mm -hmm. his life. And I'll, I actually have a verse that talks about that, you know, dude, Deuteronomy 17, 17 commands the kings of Israel and he shall not acquire many wives for himself, lest his heart, heart turn away, nor shall he acquire for himself excessive silver and gold. And then first Kings tells us how Solomon didn't do that. 
<laughs> First Kings 11, 1 18 says, Now Solomon loved many foreign women, along mm-hmm. with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, yeah. Ammonite, Edomite, <laughs> Sidonian, and Hittite women from the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the people of Israel, You shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they um, with you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their God. Solomon clung to these in love. He had 700 wives who were princesses and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth and the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not wholly follow the Lord as David his father had done. Then Solomon built a high place for Shemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites, on the mountain east of Jerusalem. And I'll say this, Molech was disgusting. The way they worshipped Molech was they put babies on this brazen statue and burned them to death. It was horrible, disgusting worship. Um, And so he did uh, did all this for his foreign wives who made offerings and sacrifice to their gods. You look at this and like, basically the woman is like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And it's even more, I think, ironic if this is Bathsheba talking to her her son. Hmm. Right. Because <laughs> Bathsheba is probably the most well-known woman that turned a king astray uh, in the Bible. And uh, so... First so I think hand there's... account. What? First, <laughs> first, hand, first account. hand account. So, so whether it's Bathsheba or not, there's wisdom here. It's not saying that women are bad. Don't get, don't get me wrong, right? The pursuit of women over God... And, and also multiple women, you know, multiple wives. So Yeah. Verse 3, uh, do not give your strength to women, reminds me of, I, I just read in my daily, yearly reading, this uh, Samson, and he was, you know, a judge over Israel. Then mm-hmm. af- after a number of women he's gone through, he's with Delilah, who through her badgering, he eventually literally gives her the, um, the method with how to cut off his strength, his hair, you know, yeah. like, he literally gave his strength to women, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, it didn't end well for him. Yeah, so. and it didn't it didn't end well for Solomon either because his kingdom ended up divided and and it and it you know cost oh. his son the the legacy. So so anyways, um, yeah, that's that's a I think an important note here. And it, Proverbs actually talks a little bit, uh, you know, just says this in, in nine Proverbs nine thirteen says the woman of folly is loud, she is seductive, knows no, and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house. She takes a seat on the highest place of the town, calling to those who pass by, who are going straight on the way. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, stolen water is sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he does not know that the dead are there, that her guests are in the depths of Sheol. So, hmm. I mean. That's not us. No. That, that isn't <laughs> us. But I would say that, I mean, and I'm speaking to the men here, and, you know, I don't know, maybe women have this struggle too, but men, a lot of men struggle with, with, lust and um pornography and looking looking at women and jesus was very clear that even looking at women with lust in your heart is is adultery in your heart and so um so don't think that you have to go the full the full way to be tripped up by Mm -hmm. this because pornography is a consuming addiction for men and and that's why and that's why it's interesting that the the two things that are called out here are, are kind of addictive behaviors substance and 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 sexual addiction mm. uh, is kind of what what I, I'm looking at this talking about. And yeah, it's one line, and maybe I'm drawing a lot out of it. But there's a lot of other verses you can pull in to to talk about this. And and why? Because as as leaders, men men at at, a, at the minimum, you're a leader in your home. But but many of us are leaders in in other capacities in the, in our workplaces, in our communities, and and as leaders, we need to be rising above the, above these things. So um, obviously, people struggle, and and there is hope. Um, I think we've talked about it in the past, you know, CR, um, get help, get, you know, hook up with your brothers. Um, if, if that's something that you're struggling with, but don't, don't just read into this. Well, I only have one wife and, you know, it's like, well, if you're struggling in that area, then this is for you too. So, yeah. And the second part of, um, verse one, uh, one through nine, that, that chunk there of scripture, mm-hmm. it says, but instead speak up for those who, um, who need justice like Mm, i'm paraphrasing there but it says to you know like yes don't spend your time with um ungodly 
unfavorable women, but mm-hmm. also to speak up for those yeah. um, that can't speak up for themselves. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's so. good. And that's a good segue even into the second part, because the second part is saying it's not good for kings. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's not good for kings, O Lemuel. It is not good for kings to drink wine or for ru- rulers to take, take strong drink. And um, why? Because it says, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all afflicted. Uh, then it says, go out, give strong drink to the one who is perishing and the one who, mm-hmm. who is the, uh, to those who are bitter and distressed. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more, but open your mouth for the mute. And that's the part that I think that you're talking about. Open your mouth yeah. for the mute for the rights of those who are destitute. And this, you know, really this part is as, as leaders, and I, I'm, I'm not just speaking to men. I think this is all, all leaders in all capacity. Obviously, she was writing to a man and and even the part i'm gonna go this way even for women i think that are chasing after men the wrong way i think that could be a thing too absolutely i don't i can't really speak to that as much myself (laughs) but i'm sure that that's you know something there but but um but for drink i mean that that could be this goes you know this isn't just a man king thing like you could be a queen and a woman and have that struggle as well and and uh, but why um because we need to be sober-minded and why so that we can do what you were talking about angela you know we need to be sober minded so that we can fight stand up for the rights of others that we can help dispense just justice you know be be thoughtful in the way that we execute that the bible actually talks about i, I looked up several verses uh about alcohol in general and and um you know and alcohol is one of those very um it's not forbidden you know so it's not like you can never have drink but what is forbidden is is giving yourself over to the influence of a substance, right? And so, um, obviously, Jesus turned water into wine. So <laughs> there was, you know, yeah. so so there is a there is a case where where that you can say, okay, well, you know, in moderation, or if, if if it's not a struggle for you or people that you're around, I would say as well, right? Like if you're around somebody mm-hmm. who's struggling with you know a, a substance addiction, you know popping back a, a popping open a bottle of wine is probably not a good idea right <laughs> you know but you know if you're going to have a, a glass every now and then or something you know that's not a sin right like so we're not saying that but here's the thing right we should always be looking to be sober-minded in whatever we do so if you're given to that or that's something that you're gonna go over you should you should avoid it and i mean personally i, I don't struggle with that but I don't even like the taste of alcohol, so it's not a struggle for me. Like you know, but for others, I, I know that that has been the case in the past. And the Bible, you know, has several verses, and even in the New Testament, First Thessalonians says, "But since uh, we belong to that day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love for our helmet." And Peter, Peter has it several times in his First Peter letter. It says, "Therefore, preparing for your, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought." to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And, and then in 5, 8, 1 Peter 5, 8, he says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring mm-hmm. lion, seeking someone to devour. But then on the flip side, you know, there's a verse that says in, in Psalms, Psalms 104, 15, says, and wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread to strengthen man's heart. There's a time for, for things, there's an appropriateness for things, but what needs to come first is being sober-minded, being aware that the devil's prowling around, and if you're given to drunkenness or excessive drinking or substance abuse of any kind, really, you're actually opening up your yourself to uh, the devil's prowlings, and and um, you know that's a uh, that's, that's not bad. a good thing. That's bad, <laughs> and then that makes it difficult for you to do the you know to open your mouth for the mute and fight for the the destitute and judge righteously and defend the rights of the poor and the needy, which is what this is talking about. Right. Right. So you can't do that if you're not of sober mind. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking um, this next part of the chapter Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. about is um, I I brought my own misconceptions into um, before I read this and and some some things that I thought this next part of the chapter is about the verse 10 through 31 Mm -hmm. um, was that she was this perfect woman that existed um that this was a command from god for all women um and that it only applied to mothers Mm. and wives because we'll get into that later Mm. um and that um this was a real 
woman that already existed and that um, if I'm not checking every box on that then am I a godly woman right. so mm -hmm. those are some things that I brought into uh, this Bible study yeah yeah well uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I brought into it as well because um, I didn't look forward to it because I, I, I've read it before and I felt like she burns the candle at both ends and you can never rest. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't look forward to it because I'm like, I don't want to be told I need to do that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does. So, yeah. So it sounds like we've both had um, guidance and wisdom from the Lord as to what's really going on here. Yeah. yeah so let's get into it. To summarize what I got out of it was mm -hmm. it's... Um, speaking about how rare it is to find this virtuous woman <laughs> and um uh, some some um translations say uh, valiant woman mm -hmm. and so i was looking up the word word valiant okay. and um it's in hebrew that word is um let's see if i can get it right here guys i don't <laughs> speak hebrew um a shil sheil i don't know what okay. it is but um there's a few times that that word is in the Bible. Mm. Um, in Numbers 24, 18, it says it, it, that word is um, valiant. In Exodus 18, 21, that word is able. Mm. In Genesis 34, 29, the word means wealth. Mm. In Exodus 14, 4, it's a host. In Exodus 14, 9, it's army. Um, let's see, I have a few more guys. Yeah, Hold yeah. on. Um, first Samuel nine, one power. Second Samuel 22, 40 is strength. And Ruth three eleven is virtuous. Mm -hmm. And one more is, uh, gen, uh, judges 18, two and Joshua six, two is valor. Mm -hmm. So those are the virtues. Um, that I've seen used with that Hebrew word. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's really powerful. I think that's something that I I really noticed reading this this time, and I you know I don't think I came to it with as much um, emotional uh, or a much um, preconceived preconceived yeah. ideas. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. Like I'm like, oh, it's just another another Bible verse. But yeah, men don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, men that's don't fine. Get it. That's fine. That's we we don't here. get it. But here's what I did see. Here's what I saw when I came to it. That that and that this is talking about I, I like that you brought up the word virtuous this is talking about a strong powerful wise woman of action who's taking action for her family on behalf of her husband with the trust of her husband and that um and then it says and he ha will have no lack of gain the heart of her husband trusts her and he will have no lack of gain why well it's not because he's out burning all the bread you know she's she's contributing to that and mm -hmm. you know and this is getting into a little bit what i was talking about with our society you know i think a hundred years ago or probably even you know 200 years ago there was this perception that women were were to be weak they were to be in the home they were to be you know and and that was what society aspired to if you were a woman of culture or a woman of wealth then you didn't work and you didn't you had you had servants that did that for you and you you didn't put your hand to the the stool or whatever the staff or whatever it mm -hmm. was you know and and that you look at the like the 1950s 1960s and leave it to beaver and that perception of oh i'm just home and the husband's bringing home the bacon and all that you know and like um and i'm not trying to put that down per se but it created this what i'll for lack of a better term a patriarchal view that a lot of um uh, feminists and other things i think in our society today we're really pushing back on like hey we this is not fair i mean women couldn't even vote for for you know in our yeah society. they said we have more to offer than this, this right yeah, yeah. and yeah. and this this proverb to me is you know not smack dab in the middle of the bible but like pretty close to the middle of the bible and we have to look at all of the other verses about women through this lens as well is what I'm saying. And, and there's a couple that I want to call out and, and talk about because this is not about just submissive stay at home women, right? Like this woman is not just a stay at home mom who's just raising the kids and not doing anything else, right? The first one I want to read is from Genesis chapter 1, 27, 28. So God created man in his own image and the image of God, he created him. 
male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the, every living thing that moves on the earth. Man and women were both to have dominion. This, mm. is, this is not the man have dominion and the woman is the sidekick, right? Like there was, <laughs> there was an equal amount of dominion mm. having in that. And I think we talked about that, if I recall back in, uh, you know, our Genesis lesson. But, but that... It's good to remember, though, because I forgot that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a powerful thought. But then you read verses, and these are ones that I think our modern society was looking at, and and, ju- and especially non-believers and and like the feminist type culture, the you know would look at these verses and be like, well, hey now, and so like Titus two two through five says, older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound, in faith, love, and steadfast. Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They need to teach what is good and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, working at home and kind and submissive to their own husbands, <laughs> that the word of God may be reviled, may not be reviled. And and that paints this picture because when you read this, you're like, well, I just need to be quiet and stay at home and not mm. not do anything. And, and and it goes on. And Ephesians says it, you know, has another verse. It says Ephesians 5, 22 through 23 or 33 says, wives, submit to your own husbands. As to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is, his, is, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands love your... Okay, so now this is talking to you guys, husbands. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water of the word, so that... It, he might present to the church to himself in splendor without spot, wrinkle, or any such thing that she might be holy without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. People today hear the word submit, and they get that image that I was reading in Titus of like, I'm going to be at home, and I'm going to be quiet, and I'm going to be... But then when you read <laughs> Proverbs 31, like you get a very, very different image yeah. of what a woman is. And I think that that's intentional and on purpose and cannot be just shoved aside. Right. Like this is this is I mean, I guess speaking to guys who think like, you know, that, oh, women shouldn't be bosses or women shouldn't own companies or women. You know, I don't know. There's people out there that feel that way. I mean, I think it sounds more and more outdated in our culture today. But, you know, 50, 100 years ago there, that wouldn't have seemed weird. And, And so it's important that this is not God intended both men and women to participate in these activities. And the only difference is that when a decision needs to be made and there's maybe a disagreement, the man has the final vote in a marriage. It's, it's pretty much, but that doesn't apply outside, you know. Angela's not my wife, so I don't, she doesn't have to submit to me in the same way you submit to Jason, right? Like that's not, right. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no, it doesn't extend outside of that. And so anyways. Yeah, I, I kind of got something in Genesis also hmm. on this topic. So Genesis 2.18 says, God says it is not right for man to be alone. He will make a helper that is just right for him. Then he goes off and makes the animals and those. But then God says, but still no helper was just right for him. So the Lord caused caused, uh, man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of man's ribs and closed up the opening. In verse 24, it goes on to say, This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined by uh, to his wife, and the two are united into one. Mm-hmm. So it's not this separation of man here, um, wife here. They're side by side, you mm-hmm. know. Yep. So, um, and I know we went over that in Genesis when we studied that, but um, it's the truth of Genesis is still true today. Mm. And I think that that's important to look at. I think this is great. And it's in here on purpose. You know, it's not, it's not a side note. And that's why I think I I really called out that this is an Oracle. This is a prophecy, a word Mm. from the Lord. Right. And, but I also like how each of you kind of said early on, like there, there comes this perception that it's a command or that it's a, if I'm not living up to this, I'm not doing good enough. And I don't, I don't I don't think that's what the intention of this is. I think that the intention is is saying that this is something to aspire to. Right. But we're all I mean, if we look at what men are supposed to aspire to, we we, I mean, you know, love my wife as Christ loved the church and lay down my life for, you know, 
I mean, yeah, there's, there are definitely days where that does not happen. And <laughs> as much as it should, uh, you, know. you do a good job. <laughs> well. good. I chose well, and that, that's my advice to unmarried people. Like, yeah, choose well mm. that, you know, your spouse is the one family member you get to choose. You know, yeah. you're not, you're not, you're born into the rest of them. <laughs> yes, you are. And uh, choose true. well and read the Bible and f- find someone like this. You know, yes. like Angela said, it's not like a, a list of, you got to tick off all these things. And that's kind of, I, I guess I'll, I'll share a little bit about what I got out of this. Um, I had a study note in my women's Bible that said this part of Proverbs 31, it's just 10 through 31. And I don't think we mentioned, um, yet it's a it's a Hebrew acrostic Mm -hmm. um so there's 22 of them anyways it said um this section of the Bible about the Proverbs 31 woman is sometimes called the bionic woman of the Bible (laughs) I was like oh great you know (laughs) and um and, and the note says this text meaning Proverbs 31 should encourage every woman to pursue the standard race with committed energy and creativity I was like, man, you know, who wrote this? You know, (laughs) a man, a man wrote this. Uh, Even though it's a women's Bible, you know, I'm like, I've got to be energetic and creative now. Like, I'm not, you know, it's just like, I just, I was, you know, having an issue. So um, when I, when I started studying this, I was especially exhausted, which I'm not normally, Mm. but I was the morning that I started studying this. I'd been up an hour late the night before working, not just like watching TV. You know, I was like, there's stuff that had to get done. And then I got up an hour and a half early that morning to get more work done. But I knew I needed to do this as well. So I'm reading it, you know, I have a headache and I ended up reading it downstairs um, in the kitchen at the kitchen counter, looking at all the dishes to put away. They were clean because I washed them the night before, but they're like left out to air dry. And it just, even though they're clean, it just looks awful it's like all this stuff out and I will insert a picture if I get brave enough to show you what I was looking at as I'm reading about this Proverbs 31 (laughs) woman um but like I said yeah I don't really look forward to Proverbs 31 woman because it just seems like this inattainable list of stuff to do um so there was a time in my life where I wasn't as healthy as I am now, and I look back on my journals and my time with the Lord, and I'm writing to Him, mm. and I write to Him about how tired I am. And then I'm thankful that that's not, that's not the case now, so I've you know experienced some healing, but th- I guess that idea of tiredness, you know, that that is clouding, um, was clouding what I was able to see and get from Proverbs 31, and so that's where we need wisdom. Um, so where I went with that, I just chose to make a list of what the Proverbs 31 woman isn't. She's not a woman who doesn't sleep. She, she's not a woman who doesn't take care of herself. Um, it doesn't say that she works so, on the Sabbath because she's so busy. You know, it doesn't mention anything about busyness. Uh, it doesn't mention that she's stressed out. And in fact, uh, you know, it mentions that she can laugh at the time to come or some mm-hmm. versions say laugh at the future, you know. And I got to say, just uh, insert we're recording this uh, like two days before the April 8 eclipse, you know? And so Donovan and I have been talking about that, you know, we're not worried, you know? And it's like, I can laugh at the future. So I was like, ha ha, what eclipse, you know? Um, but like, cause, cause, and I'll just uh, sidebar on that. And no matter what happens, you know, signs in the Bible, things coming, you know, happening, we still have to believe and repent. I mean, that yes. that's that's all we can do. Yeah. Um, what what today can you change in your life to be more like God and more holy? So yeah. and that's that's my little side on that. Um, and I wrote out, I was like, I want to identify, like, why do I not look forward to Proverbs 31 woman? So I wrote out three verses that, hmm. that are hard for me. Uh, verse 15, she rises while it's still night. I'm like, up here in the Pacific Northwest in the summer, it's like light at 5 a.m. So I'm, you know, like, she's up at 4.30 to start doing X, Y, and Z. I'm like, that's not me. <laughs> uh, verse 18 her lamp never goes out and I read a study note that said that this is like a literal lamp not a figurative lamp I was like man like I really I was yeah. looking for an out you know and well and I'll just add like the lamps back then weren't just plug them in and leave the light on it's like somebody had to and put oil, oil in that lamp to keep it uh-huh. going yeah yeah <laughs> so, so maybe she went I mean obviously she slept so she must have like put enough oil in before she went to bed Right. So that the night lights on. It kind of reminded me when we first moved into this house, um, the kids were young and I'm like, they were like three and five. And I'm like, I, ha- I bought little night lights so they could see in the middle of the night in case mm-hmm. they had to come to our, yeah. our, to the bathroom or come see us in our bedroom, you know, cause they, they did that back then. So that's kind of what it reminded me of. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And then verse 27, it says she's never idle. So like, I'm just like, well, can I never rest? You know, um, so I was just kind of spinning, you know, like going into negative places here. So I did something brave. And at nine o'clock in the morning, I took a nap. And I haven't taken a nap in forever, but, and I say it was brave because it's hard for me to do, it's, it's hard to rest. Mm-hmm. But I did it and I woke up from my much needed nap with a clear head and wisdom and I feel like God put this thought in my head like I'm taking this Proverbs 31 woman section too literally and I was led to look up uh, the word idle since I said she's never idle Um, I think it's verse 27 she does not eat the bread of idleness Um, Mm. and that word idle um, in Hebrew means indolence which is not really a word we use nowadays so I had to look that up it means habitual laziness sloth (laughs) so I was like you know that is not me I'm not habitually lazy so yeah habitually it was like (laughs) yeah I felt released because I was like so this so Proverbs 31 woman it's talking about characteristics not a to-do list right so like okay so I was just you know I was thankful for the Lord and his revelation um it talks about the fear of the Lord at the end um verse 30 but a woman who fears the Lord she shall be praised and I think Fearing, of, fearing the Lord is the key to this. You know, mm. the all we have, you know, the house that I live in, the dishes that I get to do right. and the clothes I get to wash, all that is from the Lord, my creator, who's holding the whole universe together. And um, out of my fear and reverence for him, and not fear that I'm going to be punished if I don't do enough. You right. know, not that kind of fear. Just talking about reverence for the Lord, my love and respect for him. I will do these things. And then... I was, I was, I don't know, I guess the Lord put this in my mind. I started thinking about Mary and Martha in the New Testament in mm. Luke 10, which will be a 52-week Bible challenge. Um, we'll study all of Luke 10, I think, week 26. Um, so uh, Mar- Martha, busy Martha, she invites Jesus into her home. She's busy doing all the preparations, and Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus. And Martha's like, hey, why don't you tell my sister to come help me? You know? Right. And Jesus says, Martha... Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has made the right choice and it will not be taken away from her. Mm. So don't sacrifice your time with Jesus because your to-do list is extra long today. And I really needed to hear that this week. Um, And it appears that Martha had all the actions of the Proverbs 31 woman. She's doing X, Y, and Z in the house, but it resulted in stress and worry. And I think before this week, that that's where I would have been trying, trying to do these things, but it's going to result in stress and worry. And mm. for me, like uh, lack of sleep. But in contrast, Mary had the fear of the Lord. And we know that because she's sitting at his feet listening. And Jesus said it won't be taken away from her. So I love that because she her time spent with the Lord was not viewed as idle. You know, right. it was valuable and it was the most necessary thing and it will not be taken away from her. So I just, I was just like, thank you, Lord. This is what I needed. Um, I spent time with him and studying this and figuring all this out when, I mean, like this week particular, so busy. So, uh, and I want to share one more thing. I, I re- as I was studying this, I really wanted to find a commentary that said, you don't have to do all these things. Like I wanted, I wanted somebody to release me. Did from, you find that? No, 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 there is, I, I did not. Um, I did like, I remember studying this before. I think like some people say, like you said, this isn't necessarily one woman, you know, right. like who did all these things. And so, but I wanted to be released from the madness of trying to attain and be these things. I want to be released from being Martha, you know, so right. I'm working on that. And, And so anyways, this revelation, you know, and this wisdom that came to me only came after I took that nap. And that kind of blew my mind too. You know, so I'm not saying I'm going to like schedule a nap every day. I really just need to like manage my time better and, you know, not stay up so late and get up so early, (laughs) no matter the reason, even if it's for work, you know. So um, I just kind of ended on, you know, Proverbs 31 is a wise mother's words to her son. <clears throat> it's not a mother's to-do list for her daughter. Right. You know? mm. So, yeah, I, some, I feel some cultures, some cultures do have those things where it's, um, you have to have this to-do list mm. before you're accepted. 
And wow. that's that's something that um, you don't find in Christianity. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's pretty awesome. That's great. Yeah, yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. Some things that I thought about as you were talking, one was the, you know, you mentioned the, the, the worry as opposed to the, the laughter, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, that's why, why is this woman able to laugh at the future? Because she's not worried. Why right. isn't she worried? Because she's prepared, mm-hmm. right? And I think that that's, well, that's something that I see in this. So she's not afraid of snow. Why? Because she's already clothed her children and her mm-hmm. family, right? And that's, there's, a, there's a forward-lookingness that I think says, hey, I need to do X, Y, and Z to get ready. And, you know, and maybe in today's society, it's buying groceries or having you know, clothes, you know, yeah. like I don't buy clothes. So if you don't like be like, hey, go buy clothes or buy clothes for me, I'm like, <laughs> I'll just wear the same ones until they're literally <laughs> falling off. You know, not not because I can't. I just I just don't. It does not something that's on the forefront of my mind. Can I and, say something though? Yeah. It's not something that's on the forefront of my mind <laughs> thinking about your clothing. Um and so it that it doesn't come naturally to me. So you know, you read these things, I'm like, this doesn't come naturally to me. You know, thinking ahead about what my kids might need in the summer. So I'm going to buy it now while it's on sale. Or, you know, you know, like s- some women are really great at that. You know, I'm not. And, and that's okay. And I think like you were talking about roles of men and women. And I'm a stay-at-home mom. Mm-hmm. I used to have a cottage industry. I don't have a cottage industry anymore. So I'm not bringing home any bread. You mm-hmm. know, you work outside the home. Mm-hmm. You didn't always. Right. You know, so like, um, like you were saying at the beginning, you were going to talk about that, like, this isn't applicable to just married women with children right you know right yeah it, it's not it's it's for any any woman and really really the virtues that they're talking about is could be applied to men also you yeah. know mm-hmm. um valiant mm. able strength virtuous valor like mm-hmm. those are things that um we get by being in close connection with god yeah so those are things that um, we have that are a gift from God when we choose to spend time with him. And, yeah. and that's something that ties into what you were saying is that um, um, we don't have to worry, right? You were saying we don't have to worry. Um, women are not only supposed to be prepared for their, for their families, but we're also called to trust that God has already prepared and, and had the way there. So we, we don't, we don't just just have to be always doing, mm-hmm. but we mm-hmm. can also have that relaxation that we trust that God has it. You that's know? so good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You know, and and you said something else, uh, Kelly, that I when you were talking about, um, or maybe it was you, Angela. One of you said something about like this is written to, um, this is written to a man. Yeah. This is mm-hmm. written to a king. Uh, or written by a king from his mother, right? And that this is, you know, it's not a to-do list, right? That's really not what it is. But Thank I think know. it's it's a <laughs> mindset that men need to have as well towards towards their women. And what do I mean by that? Well, and this kind of gets a little bit back to what I was talking about, that patriarchal, you know, stay at home, be quiet mm-hmm. woman and, and play your part, like barefoot, pregnant, whatever you want to call it, right? Like there's this... There's this stigma, whether it's real or just projected by society on Christianity that says that's what Christians believe, but we don't yeah. and we shouldn't. This is what we should be looking for in our in our women as men, right? Like the women that are not idle, women that are doing something, that are looking forward, you know, that are take, that are caretakers. It's like the heart of her husband trusts her mm-hmm. and will have no lack of gain, right? There's a trust. There's a mutual trust that's going on, but... But so a woman that he can trust. Why? Because she ta- she gets stuff done. He's not nagging her. She's not nagging him. There's no nagging. There's no like, I'm trying to change this person. Um, and then uh, things that stood out to me as I was reading it this time, and, and maybe it's because I've been, I don't know, on my YouTube feed, there's been lots of discussions about modern dating and what modern young women are looking for in men and mm-hmm. men, what men are looking for in women and that there's huge societal disconnect where hookup culture and things like that have kind of destroyed these traditional family values. And there's this societal disconnect, you know, um, with um, what the Bible says and what what society is looking for today, you know, um, or at least the, not, the the secular society and is, is young, young women are looking to 
have the same quote power as men and 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 there's a lot of promiscuity and that's destroying their their sexuality and and their their you know purity and and it's taken a toll on them at least from the things that i've seen coming across my youtube feed i mean <laughs> not that i'm an expert on that culture but it, it i found it fascinating because it's so in the face of of what this is saying like this is saying it's okay to be a strong woman with dignity mm. um uh, a woman of wisdom mm -hmm. who's, who's teaching with kindness on her tongue you know like these are these are good qualities and that's something that as as men we should be looking for in our wives and i found it in my life you know so, so, so yeah no it's, i mean it's true though i mean like i know you you're you say you're stressed out by this but i mean i'm looking at this and i'm, I'm not seeing anymore. <laughs> well you're not anymore but you said you were and yeah, i mean i'm looking at this and i'm seeing you know my wife who oh, that's kelly. is oh yeah is who's kelly. doing oh, all of these things <laughs> in the ways that these things would translate into modern society i mean i mm. you know made a joke but i mean it is you know it's like you 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 do provide clothes and food i mean food is we always get food you know there's you go to the grocery store <laughs> well but i mean those are those are important things you you like you said you don't have a cottage industry now but there was a point in time when you did and that um and it talks about how you know the the people the children rise up and call her blessed and her husband also and he praises her many women have done excellently but you surpassed them all and i mean i'd say that about you you okay. know I, and that's um i mean it's not not to be cheesy i'm just saying that this is how i see you mm -hmm. and I, i'm going to say this to the men that something that we need to learn here is that you need to speak praise over your wife and this is something i probably need to grow in myself because i mean <laughs> Um, as, as a husband, we need to be praising our wives and encouraging them. And, and, sh and, um, and I'm going to give you some of the best marriage advice I ever got that I can't even remember who told it to me, but it was back when I was very young, either not even married or newly married. I can't even remember, but the best advice that I would give to somebody who is married or thinking about getting married or, or what never, ever say anything bad about your wife to anybody ever period nothing negative if you're talking about your wife you know it's fine to say you know she did x or did y if that's what really happened but but never be like oh my wife is you know she's just a nag and blah 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 and complain don't complain about your wife to anybody period you can pray about it to god if you want to he'll fi he'll fix you straight but but uh <laughs> don't talk about it to anybody else ever and and look for ways to praise your wife why because that well one is what what she deserves and two that's going to help encourage her and see these things because i can i mean i have two women sitting here right next to me who probably both are saying oh, man i don't feel like i'm living up to this but that's not what i see in both of them i, mean, I don't know angela as well as i know kelly but i can tell you that i see the proverbs 31 women in both of you and so so that's um, that's just an encouragement to men, right? Like this, this is it says her children rise up and call her blessed, and you know, fathers teach your children to to do that. And can I say uh, something right there? Yeah. Um, well, thank you for your encouragement as well, and I know Jason yes. would definitely call you a yes. Proverbs thirty one woman as well. And um, I think that praise from the husband is important because I, if your children are teenage years, you know they're not standing up and calling you blessed, really. No, you know? we really need it from yeah. our husbands. You at get that eye time. rolls, <laughs> you get disgust. You know, I yeah. mean, I'm just saying. So I'm like, oh, she didn't have teenage yeah. children when this was written. You know, <laughs> it, it happens when they get older and look back and realize. You know, I mean, I, I think I even now I was the teenage boy rolling his eyes at his mother, but I mean if I honest and I looked at my, what my mom did you know mm. she you know uh, she she did a lot of these things too yeah. you know and so I think that that's important so I mean that's something that I personally took away that I want to do better at is is living that out so I'm not saying I'm perfect at this guys but I'm saying we need to do this we need to be praising our wives mm. and encouraging them and standing up and telling our so when you're talking to your guy friends about your wife it better be many women have done excellently but my wife surpasses them all right and that's what you need to say because it'll do two things one in your mind you'll you'll be looking for those things and number two uh you know it'll it'll change your heart as you, you know if there, if there's something you want to complain about you know stop stop don't do it remember this verse and go 
find something to praise and then it'll change it'll it'll stop that that argument or that feeling you know or whatever it is and it'll i mean like i said best marriage i don't even remember who gave it to me and but. i would say <laughs> you you lived your life that way and 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 conversely for women you don't need to be talking negatively about your husband right. other, and we live our lives that way and you know you guys do yeah. too so right. it's it's yeah. it'll change your life and if you ever catch me saying anything didn't i give you 100 percent permission to call me out although i think you'll be hard because i i really don't i i try to live yeah. my life this way and i i don't and i'll just say this because i live my life this way i don't feel like i need to complain about mm. my wife right like there's nothing honestly when i feel like i'm getting in a mood where i want to or i'm grumbling like and i usually the Holy Spirit or God will be like, yeah, you need to go fix yourself. You're the problem. <laughs> like, you know, like I'm like, oh, okay, then I need to go repent and, and deal with it. So that's, that's, uh, uh, I got a good one. Well, I mean, most <laughs> most of the time I, I, you know, I've had my days, but there, there are. Well, that's the thing. Like Angela started out saying like, this isn't a perfection. It's not right. about perfection. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. But. And, um, for, for verse 11, where it says the heart of her husband trusts her and will not lack anything good. That's the CSB version. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a time when, um, I was not that woman at all. I didn't, I, I wasn't that woman for my husband or my family. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was, I, I felt like I was more of the example of Delilah in the Mm -hmm. Bible. Um, that manipulated and um, betrayed her husband and I um, prayed and I came to a breaking point and I asked God to help me to get out of the situations that I was putting myself in and um, I I'm happy to say that like I don't follow those things anymore I am very um I, I'm very in love. I love and honor the husband that um, God gave me. Yeah. And so uh, I, I just left all those problems that I had um, that I thought were good for me. Mm. Like you're, you were talking about the um, today's culture and how they want to be above men and, oh, well, I can do everything just as well. And um just disagreeing and dishonoring men and you know that's who I was before and um I have the same the same husband I did before um we've just grown closer together and we Mm. honor each other as we honor God together so um Romans 12 2 says then you will be able to see Uh, to test and see what God's will is, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And that's what I was able to do as I drew closer to him. So that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. This story of redemption and of God's work in your life individually. And then in the marriage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 And I I think we, you know, we're, we're good friends with you and Jason. So we, we know and see the honor and respect you guys and love you guys have for each other and, I think yes. everyone around you would see that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We're in good company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this, you know, this is a, this is actually a great, a great chapter for marriage and for, um, I know it, it focuses on the, the women, but really you could, this is an acrostic and we said that word earlier. So if you don't know what that means, mm. it basically means that each verse of the starting at verse 10, uh, to the end of the chapter is is starts with a different letter in the Hebrew alpha, alphabet. So like we would say A B C D. They have obviously the Hebrew Hebrew letters that are correspondent there, and each one is a different one alphabetically. So so it's it's a poem, you know. Um, it, it's uh, I think that that's it's something to aspire to, but not feel condemned over if you're not there. It's a it's a guiding a guiding post for both men and women. Um, men men, this is what we look look for in women not not as a checklist <laughs> not as a oh yeah you're you're not making it on verse 19 i'm sorry you're, you're, you're marriage material <laughs> or whatever i don't yeah, know put the put right. the hand into this she staff. doesn't uh, i'm sorry yeah. i don't sew yeah i don't either <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah i mean you but, don't want me to sew <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually you're the one who sews the buttons on if a yeah. button falls off yeah and that's and that's fine <laughs> you know it's the the point is is that there's mutual honor and respect seen here. Yeah. How do we know that it's mutual? Well, obviously, because it says the heart of her husband trusts her. 
she does him no she does him good and not harm all the days of her life you know that the and and, and, it, and it it ripples out from the marriage why do we see that her husband is known in the gates where he mm. when he sits among the elders of the land right and then she talks about uh it talks about the 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 sales the merchants i can't remember what verse that was but mm -hmm. there's a verse that talks about how she's you know selling her her stuff to the merchants and that so that that mutual respect and honor in the marriage it does a couple things it it allows it gives the woman permission to to be this because anna and not that they, she even needs permission right like it's not about permission and submission like permission is probably the wrong word but it, it frees the woman to not have to worry about other things so that she can walk in who she truly is and who god's created her to be that's that's the word i'm looking mm -hmm. at permission is the wrong word it, it when you're not dealing with trying to be manipulative and change the other person on both sides this goes both right. ways husbands and women when you're not trying to manipulate each other and make them be something but you're appreciating them what this is is this is appreciating the woman for what she brings to the marriage right and and that's and in this case you know it happens to be sewing and whatever they did back then like we don't do that stuff nowadays so but every every person men and women bring something to the marriage that is worthy of honor and praise find that and praise it and honor yeah. that and it, you'll find that god will honor that and it will begin to if you if you're struggling with marriage you know, in your marriage and you know i don't know what your struggles are but try to find something in your spouse that you can honor and and every day and not it's not about what they do back it's not about manipulation not about changing them just recognize man you really do an amazing job at whatever it is find the thing and and give them praise and and it goes both ways and i know you're good at that for me you, you, you know you always say you're thankful and call out things and i you know words words of encouragement probably isn't my primary love, love language but it, it, it's important and it does it does matter and i <laughs> notice i guess that's what i say I'm not great at giving it back i because like i said it's not my primary love language but i i i uh, i appreciate that so Anyways. You're doing well today. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to make up a lost time here. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, so the Bible challenge this week is say something, say something nice to your spouse. And if you don't have a spouse, then just try to be more encouraging to people around you. We'll see you all next week. God bless. Bye.